I want you to look carefully at what's written on there. I would like you to see if you could write a conversation of one of the cue cards that you've had. All right, short conversation right Inspectors are only there to inspect. They're not allowed to give advice. If a school wants advice, it must be bought separately, usually from a school's local education authority. After observing lessons, however, most inspectors give teachers some indication of how well they're doing. I'd felt that it had gone well. The lesson had been a good lesson, in my view. And then to have somebody turn around and say, well, yes, there were parts of it that were good, but on the whole, these children are underachieving. It made you think, well, they can't, it can't have been a good lesson. Even if I thought they behaved well and thought that they'd learned what they wanted, they had to learn. If they're underachieving, well, it must be, must be my fault. It must be my, you know, something that I'm doing. And that was, that was hard to deal with. The object is to come to some conclusions, but not to assassinate people, not to make people feel bad about what they're doing. Well, I felt very demoralised, really. I'd done completely the wrong thing. But, um, you know, we thought it was very, very early in the week to be saying, I haven't seen this and I haven't seen that. It was one lesson, one of my lessons and a bit of Isabel's. I want to add one incident with year 11. <laughs> and the inspector came in and out of all the group, he sat down next to two lads that in the past have created some problems. And as the inspector is actually sitting there, this lad sits there and he's stroking the leg of the lad next to him. <laughs> All the way through the lesson, just stroking his leg. I didn't know whether to say, could you leave that lad's <laughs> leg alone, ignore it. I was just thankful the inspector sat there, else he might be stroking both <laughs> legs. <laughs> the shame was, it had nothing to do with the lesson. If it was part of the lesson, I could say active learning. <laughs> so next time, I'm going to incorporate a lesson that involves touching legs. <laughs> Deviancy or something. <laughs> I sense and detect from you um, a pleasant, on the whole, a pleasant surprise about the, the way in which the children are very welcoming with us and open and, uh, and, and, and wanting to get to know us. S student relationships with me have been nice. Welcoming, friendly, chatty, yeah, yes. not frightened at all. Uh, tell us what you're doing, what are you yeah. here for, yeah. tell us. Have you done science before? I said, oh, bit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. And have you? I feel that the staff are still very nervous. Um, I think there's a lot of nervousness um, around. Um, and just as I've seen good relationships, I've also seen one or two youngsters who have been trying it on and pushing as hard as they can. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens as the week develops. By the start of the second day, the inspectors have observed most of the teachers in action. Now, every head of department has to undergo a detailed interview by their subject inspector. Do you believe the children come to you, though, at um, year seven um, with no facts or skills? Do you believe uh, you have I've, to start from said, scratch? Uh, as I've said earlier, it, a lot depends upon the feeder schools. Some of them are fully geared up and have got all the ideas they'd ever want to have. Uh, some of them don't seem to possess a clue yeah. as far as that sort of uh, business goes. So how do you plan a course um, which accounts for those starting points that you described? Well, basically, by starting from scratch. We, we've, we've got to get hands-on tools, get hands-on materials, and actually get them in and produce something, make something, get their enthusiasm that way. Is it okay if I yeah, join no problem. David no problem. on this one? Yeah, of course. Um, why, do you, why do you say that it's of particular relevance to the students here, sociology? What, what we're actually doing, so, you see, I, it's, it, it all comes down to ideology. I believe that the way out for a lot of the students at this school is via education. Sociology is it's the old theory of what is knowledge. If it's knowledge like science, it's a body of knowledge that they have to learn 
reproduce for the exam to get the grades. Then as far as I'm concerned, that alienates a lot of students. Sociology isn't like that. Sociology is dealing with topics that is directly relevant to them that they can shine in. That they, they, don't, they don't need me in lots of ways. Because when I'm talking about problems within the family, they probably know problems within the family far more than I do. So what it does is it enriches, they, they can use their knowledge, if you like, far better in sociology than lots of other subjects. I mean, the government annoys me because it says all this about raising of standards. There's a lot more to school than just raising of standards. Right. All they see is a classroom of teacher and kids. And um, your inspectors, that's probably all you see. Is that your great anxiety then about? about the, an Ofsted inspection you see it as sort of meeting that kind of, as you perceive it, that government mandate? I think Ofsted is obviously part of the government machine. Mm -hmm. And I see Ofsted as, if I'm perfectly honest, I think it's a complete and utter waste of money. Mm -hmm. I don't actually see that just because a team of inspectors can come in for a week, that that will raise the standards of that school. I mean, if you wanted to do that, then you could have advisors. Not an inspection, an inspection totally and utterly different. So you have an advisor come in and he says, look, what I'd like to do, I don't think you're doing this area so well, this might be the way forward. It's at the end of the week, are you going to sit down and are you going to give me concrete policies that the areas that I'm not very good at and there's no such thing as a perfect teacher and say, this is the way forward? Because I don't think you do. And everybody I've spoken to, you don't. No, I'm an honest professional, trying to do my job just like you are. When we work as we do, we have a clear focus that our work actually can improve in our different ways and not at the same time. We advise, we support, we train and we inspect. You can actually inspect without giving advice and people tried that for years, it wasn't helpful. Not many people can give very successful advice unless they've got into needs analysis. And actually that's what a good inspection is. And often, often, the culture in our schools has not been to encourage other people aiding and helping that. In fact, there's been a tradition of no external help whatsoever. Well, that's not and true in speak, Leicester. That's well, not true in Leicester because we have advisors in Leicester. Well, we always have done. Well, 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 but you're, you're coming in as an inspector. I think we're, we're, yes. we're missing the point. Yeah. You people no, are Austin. inspectors. Austin inspector. Yeah. yeah dreaded creature. Well, yes. the, the point being, there's an underlying assumption by having Ofsted inspections that schools aren't doing what they should be doing. No, and if you'd like... To make the system more publicly accountable. There's no judgment taken about that. And we certainly haven't taken a view like that. No. So it's wrong of you to imply that. <laughs> Are you, are you and I going to meet at the end of this inspection then and reconvene this debate? The thing is, you see, we're, we're, we're coming from different perspectives. I'll ask you a straight question. Yes. Would you be happy to do that? Because I would. Yeah. Okay. Would a we... lot is invested in you as a teacher. Yeah. £28 billion pounds is invested I in don't people see, like you. See, I, th I, I, I personally say, and I, this probably isn't the place to say this, but I see it as undermining all the work that I've done yes. in the fact that in one week, Anyone can have a bad lesson. I don't care how good it is. Let's have this discussion at the end of the week to see whether what seems to be your worst fears and nightmares are materialising. OK. Fine. Kevin, you shouldn't be in there. You know that, don't you? Sources room. I said, two weeks, keep your nose clean for two weeks and then I'll try and get you back in. But don't make it difficult for you or me. I've got a poster belonging to you, Kevin. Would you like to come and collect it from me? Yeah. What's she called? Pardon? What's she called? Pamela? Oh. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, are you going to come and collect it from me? Yeah. And don't leave it pinned up anywhere else? No. Right. Sir? Yes, Peter. Some guy just wanted in the air with a plastic bottle, sir. Some guy? Yeah, I don't know his name, sir. Some guy? Yeah. Where Where did this happen, Peter? It's in the, um, the library, sir. In the library? Yeah. But you don't know who it was? No, Are you all right? Yeah. OK. Well, you sit down and get on with that. And if you find out who it was, let yeah. me know. People fear that um, because we're a city school, some of these inspectors will come in and not have an awareness of the difficulties that we're working under. In some of the circumstances we're working in here, it is much tougher, much harder to achieve progress. So no, 
There's been a fight between two girls in a science class, right in front of an inspector. What does she call you? A stupid cow. So I just, just punched her. We started having a fight. So have you done this before? What, you two have been fighting together? Yeah, for ages now. What's going to happen, do you think? Don't know. Probably suspension. How do you feel about that? I'm not really bothered, as long as she gets suspended as well. What we're trying to do is help people to choose to behave properly, really. And it's part of growing up and becoming an adult and, and learning that you, the way you behave is to do with you. You can choose how to behave. That's the important thing. Not that you just do it because you... It happens to you. You choose. Hiya. Can I get my... Um... Thank you for coming. No, no, it's, it's lovely. Small oh. gathering, but the others don't. Unless we've got ZZ Top or Metallica or uh, what's the other one they like? Or Meatloaf we had the other week. Um, I don't think we'll get them up here. But... Lovely. Thanks so much Thanks. for having me. What's your favourite subject? Uh, yeah. French. French. Science French. and maths. French. French? Oh, well, yeah, I'm French. I'm glad to hear that. Well done. <laughs> I've had a look at the French timetables, and you've got French this afternoon, so year seven, haven't you? Yes, yeah. Mm. What are you doing in French at the moment, then? We're doing um, posters to like, advertise things in Leicester. Mm. So what's your poster about, then? Football. Football? Uh, yeah. Donc tu vas acheter un, un football à Leicester, alors, oui? What's your poster Manu. about? I support Man U. Come on. Je ne comprends pas. Je ne comprends pas. Très bien. Qu'est-ce qu'on va dire Levez la main, s'il vous plaît. Levez la main. Alpha. Répétez, s'il vous plaît. Répétez, s'il vous plaît. Répétez, s'il vous plaît. Bon, alors, voici les instructions. Alors, écoutez. Écoutez. Regardez. Regardez. Concentrez. Concentrez. Écrivez. Écrivez. Dessinez. Dessinez. Lisez. Lisez. Taisez-vous. Taisez-vous. Parlez avec un ami. Allez, allez, allez. Chital, où habites-tu J'habite Leicester. Leicester. Alors, qu'est-ce qu'il y a à Leicester Daniel Il y a un cours de tennis. Ok, très bien. Des cours de tennis Des cours de tennis. Oui. Des pistes cyclables Des pistes cyclables. Une église Une église. Merci. The lesson was very good indeed. I think that was one and twos all the way. So that's the top marks we have because, as you know, one and twos are, are the best grades. So it was very good. Certainly one for quality of teaching, definitely. I thought the lesson was a bit of a mishmash. You know, it started off OK. The kids responded well. I think perhaps I was a bit... I expected a bit too much. We did no writing. 
I mean, for 50 minutes, that's quite something, um, which I, I often do. But the afternoon lesson isn't the best time for that. The morning lesson's the best time for that. When they've, you know, when they've not had a chance to have their Coke and, you know, um, E-numbers and <laughs> donuts and they're all high, you know.